Mm. Hey, fellas. I know a lot of you guys like the slurp. The slurp. Somebody asked me to do a slurp. I don't know if he's being a smart aleck or, or was really serious about it, but... Mm. Some people say that's gross. I am drinking freaking coffee. Anyway, hey, fellas, again. I don't know if I said that before. Uh, in this exciting episode of the Harrier Build, I get paint on it. Now... I don't go real in-depth on uh, the base coat. What I want to do with this one, well, because um, if you watch my Top Gun Tomcat build, I really go in-depth on doing, like, the salt technique and and um, the marbling layer and all that stuff. I did show that on this one, but I don't, like, go in-depth. And this is a big plane, so it's kind of hard to show how I paint stuff on such a big model because I have to hold it funny ways. But uh, what I want to do with this uh, painting series, and this, I'll probably throw another one out there with, with the painting on it, but... Um, just show some things that I don't normally show, like, uh, in this one I paint the exhaust nozzles and the heat shields and stuff, uh, um, and then do, uh, do some bare metal foil work with, with one of the sets of bombs that I got, so, uh, I, th I think it's kind of interesting, and then I say that and people be like, well, yeah, that sucked. <laughs> All the stuff I think is boring, people like, I don't know, hey, who cares, you know, I do this because, uh, I enjoy doing it, and I think I think some of you guys uh, enjoy it as well. But um, oh, uh, James Mower, one of my comment viewers and commenters, had mentioned uh, after the last video that the the blow in doors there next to the exhaust uh, or the uh, intakes, uh, I didn't have them properly positioned. They were supposed the bottom ones were supposed to be closed, and uh, because the engine's going to be off in this display. And I had them modeled open, so I went ahead and and, uh, and went ahead and fixed it. It was just kind of driving me nuts that I didn't have them right. It really wasn't that big of a deal, but uh, I got them fixed and everything's all good to go. So thank you, James and 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 Nigel from Nigel model, Nigel's Modeling Bench. He uh, he mentioned it as well. So all right, well let's get on with the video. All right, well as you can see, I've got it primed. I've got my marbling layer done. And I primed it with Mr. Finishing Servicer 1500 Black, which is my favorite primer. I then took some flat white and did my marbling layer over the whole plane. See there? And I actually started painting the bottom. Now, this is going to be in the tricolor camouflage scheme. So I've got uh, three different shades mixed up. I've got uh, 36118, which is going to be the darker area on top. Uh, I've got the mid color, which is 36231. It's a little bit lighter. And then for the bottom shade, it's uh, 36320. <clears throat> now, you know, color is one of those things where uh, it, it really depends on lighting and your perception of the color. And you look at pictures, and you can, you can take five different pictures. Um, in five different lighting conditions of the same plane and the color is going to look slightly different in each one so and with this one it's going to be really weathered so I'm not real concerned about the exact color because I'm really going to weather the heck out of it uh, these are just going to get me in the ballpark now you'll notice I got some areas masked off and what I went ahead and did with the slime lights because on these Harriers they look like they had a black section and then the um, the light yellow color for the slime light I went ahead and painted that mask that area off because there's a bunch of raised detail around it. Uh, normally I paint my slime lights after I put my base coats down, but because of all the raised detail, I found it's just gonna be easier to uh, paint them first, mask them off, and then spray the plane. Uh, for the camouflage scheme, what I'm gonna end up doing, uh, because this is such a large model, uh, in order to get things um, as close as I can, I'm gonna go ahead and draw where I want the camouflage out in a pencil. And um, because it is so big, I, I, it's gonna be hard for me to keep a straight line and uh, to, to keep everything nice and uniform. So I'm gonna go ahead and map it out with a pencil first. Uh, you'll notice that I've got the nose painted. I painted that a slightly different shade of gray than the rest of the plane. Uh, I noticed in a few different photos, they look like they're a different color in, in, on some of the planes. So I thought that might make it a little more interesting. I'll go ahead and mask that off before I paint the rest of it. And uh, I'll get my base colors laid down and then uh, we'll take a look at it then. All right, now you can see we've made a lot of progress. Now I didn't go in depth with 
the uh, the painting that I've done so far because I did I have went over it in previous videos. If you want to see some uh, in depth video uh, in depth video on how I paint uh, a scheme like this, just check out my F14 Top Gun Tomcat build. Uh, the I do a painting series on that, and it shows you basically everything you need to know how to get to this stage. Um, so let's cover some some ha, some things that I start off with now. One of the big things with dealing like a with a plane this size, and I've built a lot of big planes, is being able to hold it and grab onto it. Now, in a lot of models, there's little bitty bits that uh, break off and can fall off if you hit them the wrong way. Well, I've chosen to leave the tail fins off. It just makes it a lot easier. I can glue those on afterwards. There's a good enough fit where I'm not going to have to do any filling and sanding and any of that stuff. I got it to where I wanted it, so I've got those painted separately. And that way I'm going to be able to grab and use this kind of like a handle. So how, I'm, how I figured out the best way to hold this one is I've already glued on these gun pods and they act like kind of like a good grip. I can hold on to it. I'm not going to drop it. It's pretty secure. I can also come in here and grab on into, put my thumb and my other finger into this, uh, the uh, exhaust nozzle receptacles here and that gives me a nice secure grip. Because the one thing you don't want to do with something like this is drop it <laughs> and break it. Everything's fixable, but uh, that's just a headache you don't want to have to deal with. So I've I've uh, I've been able to manipulate it with these uh, with basically these spots. Uh, every once in a while I'll grab it up here, but I don't want to be messing up my masks down uh, covering the the gear bay. And uh, eventually, it's probably if if I grab onto this too much, it's going to rub some of the paint off down here. Now I'm going to do some weathering. And stuff and I'll save that to last because this is an area where I'm, I'm grabbing on to so I'm gonna weather and chip this uh, gun pod and stuff uh, one of the last things I do before I, I throw decals and stuff on it so we'll go over a few of the things that I've done um, I went ahead and these are the ch chafe and flare pods or cartridges and the guy that I'm building this for is real familiar with Harriers he was in the Air Force and uh, he wanted me to go ahead and fill them up. And I can't remember which one is chafe and which one is flares, but uh, it was pretty simple. I just masked these off and uh, sprayed them with uh, AK Extreme Metal Gun Metal. And then uh, came in with uh, blue Vallejo and white Vallejo and just dip, uh, dotted each, uh, each one of those little holes in. And then if I made a mistake, all I had to do was put a little bit of Vallejo thinner on the, uh, on a, on a, paper towel and then wipe off any excess if I got it on there and uh, it doesn't take off the extreme metal it just removes the Vallejo so um, went ahead and took care of that I also went around the edges and chipped just uh, just added what looked like chipping because I had sprayed the whole thing with gun metal I just took a brush with my regular uh, uh, dark gray paint and just kind of went around and made some chips I also took some uh, yellow green from Tamiya and went along and, and added some of that in there as well to make it look like the uh, the underlying primer coat I did the bottom uh, what else have I done I uh, masked off these little sections up here and spray painted those or uh, sprayed those just a little bit different color I went inside these intake little things up here and I noticed in pictures that I've seen that there's like a the white ones up here and there's red on the inside or orange. I think that was orange. So I just kind of went in with a brush and uh, tossed some white and some orange in there. I am going to do a few more things and we'll go over that <coughs> a little more in depth. It is kind of hard to film this because, like I said, it is really big. I also masked off the area around this the intakes up here and sprayed those just a little bit different color and then blended them back in because I've seen on some of the Harriers there's just a little bit, I don't know if it's a, a different shade of paint or, or how the paint sticks on there, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but some of the Harriers have like a little demarcation line where there's just a different shade right around these intakes. Um, now all the, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but all the uh, markings and stuff, those are all painted on. I made masks with my Cricut and, uh, and painted those. So I don't have to deal with decals. Now I am going to use the decals up here because I'm not going to be able to replicate the uh, that little triangle that goes right up here that says danger jet intake. I want the color of the decals to match the star and bar that goes here. So it all looks uniform. 
Um, so I'm just going to use the decals up here, and the decals actually work pretty well. Uh, from what I've used of them, they they uh, they do. <coughs> excuse me, they do go down pretty well. So um, I'm going to get on. I'll show you some of the details that I'm going to paint, and uh, probably hit the exhaust nozzles. Uh, do something cool with those, and uh, I don't know, just see where it goes from there. All right, what I want to show you now is how I'm painting the rear exhaust nozzles. Now, the one, the forward ones are going to be painted the same color as the fuselage, so I'll just weather those up differently, and I'll probably chip them and give a wash or something, but the rear ones are a little bit different. Now, I've seen, I've looked up some different images of the exhaust nozzles on the Harriers, and they, comes in, they come in all different uh, colors, and... Um, I picked out one that I liked that looked pretty dirty and, and worn and weathered and, and kind of had a steel color that was, uh, you know, after it had been heated and, and uh, all the, the elements have been thrown at it. And I came up with something like this. And uh, I really like how this turned out. So I'll show you how I did it. What I did is I uh, primed it in black and then I took some uh, light gray. Really didn't matter what color you use, I don't think. I just used the same light gray I used for the bottom of the plane. And I haphazardly went over, spraying it, uh, letting some of the black show through. And I took some NATO black and shot it on the inside. And uh, so it, it gave it kind of a sooty, um, I don't know, when you, when you look on the inside of the, the exhaust nozzles, it doesn't look like it's just jet black from, from soot. Um, there's streaks where it's gray and, and just some, some lighter black streaks. So I just used NATO black and shot it up in there. So... Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab me some Tamiya X19 smoke and some clear orange, and I'm going to mix it up, and that's what I'm going to use to color, give it that, like, uh, burnt steel color that you see on the other one. So uh, I'm not going to measure this out. I'm just going to do it by eye, and I'll probably add a little bit more smoke than orange. And what happens when you add the orange is it gives it more of a brown hue to it to the uh, to the smoke let me grab a different pipette here and when I use these clear colors what I like to do is I like to uh, typically I like to thin it with isopropyl alcohol now for some reason because of the coronavirus I can't get my 91% anywhere so I've got 70% isopropyl alcohol I guess the rest of its water so I'm going to throw this in there and thin it down. Now, the reason that I like to use alcohol is because it does it dries a lot quicker. So I can I can spray it on and uh, keep moving and not have to worry about it running so much. Now I do turn my air pressure down a bit. I've got it down to somewhere under 10 psi, and I am spraying through my uh, Iwata. HPCS, which has a 0.35 millimeter nozzle. So we'll go ahead and pour this into my color cup, and it gives it that nice pukey brown color. Okay. So let me find the best way to hold this. Let's go ahead and clip my little clipper up here. So I'm just going to go around and gradually build up the color till I get what I like. And this, uh, because it's going to be worn and, and tattered and, and I've got uh, the gray and black showing through underneath, it doesn't really have to be consistent. You know, I can spray a little bit heavier in some areas and a little bit lighter in others. It's not going to really make a difference. And I'm also going to do some more stuff over top of this too to uh, give it a more worn look. Now I want to try to avoid spraying inside of the intake. It's not really going to matter that much. but So I want the majority of my color to be on the outside here. Now it looks like this is wet, but um, it is a gloss. Keep in mind, these are. This is a gloss. Uh, the clear colors are a glossy finish. So, I 
I'm getting that nice pukey brown orangish color that uh, that I'm looking for. I'm gonna build it up probably just a little bit more. And I'm not really concerned about how nice the finish is, if it's gonna be smooth or not. I, I, I can really care less on this part. So I can get up there and just spray haphazardly and I'm not really concerned about how how nice and neat it looks. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Let me kind of compare it with the other one. Now the other one has a flat coat on it. So it is gonna show up darker, but if you look at some of the areas where I haven't added the, uh, my, my sponge technique that I'm gonna add, it looks like the color's probably pretty close. So I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. All right. So now that this is nice and dry, what I'm gonna do is I've got some uh, pigments here, and I've got, these are Ammo MIG pigments. I've got Metal Slag and Dark Earth, okay? So I'm just gonna kinda shake these up so I can get some on the lid. So I've got my Dark Earth there, and my Metal Slag right there. I'm going to use their pigment fixer. So this this uh, makes the pigment kind of stick to the to the part you're wanting to do. And let me find my sponge. I'm going to have my sponge handy. Handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pigment fixer and I'm just going to brush it on here. It's almost like a a thicker mineral spirits maybe. I don't exactly know what's in it. I don't think it's just mineral spirits because the mineral spirits don't don't seem to do the same thing that this does. So I'm just gonna wet this. Okay, and then while it's wet, I'm just gonna take my sponge, I'm gonna get some dark earth pigment on there, and I'm just gonna sponge on some areas. I'm not gonna cover the whole thing, I'm just going to hit certain areas and then I'll take some of my metal slag which is a little bit darker and I'm going to do the same thing okay just like that now, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of difference right now in what it looks like, but let me grab the hair dryer and I'll blow it off and you'll see it, you'll see it uh, really uh, pop out. All right, we'll go ahead and dust off some of these chunks. Right. So there we go. Now let me give this a flat coat and it's going to change the look of it. It's going to darken it up a little bit, I think. And let me grab, close this up. Okay, I've got my Windsor and Newton flat coat. I'm going to go ahead and spray this. So there are my beat up and worn exhaust nozzles. And I think those will look pretty cool on there. All right. <clears throat> so for the heat shields, um, I want something a little dramatic. It's probably not going to be something that you notice right offhand, but when you 
pick it up and look at it. Um, it is going to be something that you notice, and it does have a it does have a lot of weathering to it. Now, with the nozzles, these are at the rear nozzles. So the nozzle sits in here just like this. So there's a section here where it wouldn't get hit by the exhaust. So I'm gonna leave that, uh, this kind of orangish color, and I'm gonna build up some heat staining all the way into black where it would get really dirty and, and sooty. So how I'm doing that is I went ahead and primed it in black, and then I took some gray, and right there at that area where it's gonna be, I left that gray. So I'm gonna take some of my smoke and orange, and I added a little bit more orange this time. And I'm gonna build up this color, and I'm gonna concentrate and get a lot of orange down here on the bottom. And again, this is stained with isopropyl alcohol. Let that dry a little bit. I'll come around and I'll hit the rest of it. Now the orange isn't really going to cover up the uh, the NATO black too much. You can see I got some greeblies in there. That's okay. That's not that big of a deal. All right. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of clear blue right at the edge. And you gotta kinda of be careful with this, but I'm gonna add it right at the edge of the black, the clear blue. And I'm just gonna build it up. I want it to be somewhat subtle, but reach right at the edge of that black and into the orange just a little bit. Just like that. All right, now I'm gonna take some uh, Tamiya Clear Red, where the heck, there it is, X27, and I'm gonna go right behind the blue. And I'm just gonna make a line right behind the blue. And again, you wanna be subtle with these and slowly build up. we go. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but that's pretty much what I want right there. All right. Now what I can do is I can hit this with a wash. Now, since it's, this is to me a paint, it's acrylic, I can put enamel uh, washes over top of it and grab some mineral spirits here. It's already dry. So I'll go ahead and hit this with a wash and then put a flat coat on it. And then uh, we'll come back and do the final step. All right, now that we have it flat coated, what I wanna do is I wanna add some highlights in a gun metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my gun metal out that I typically use for my <clears throat> um, filler, along with cyanoacrylate. And we'll get a little bit on a makeup applicator. Yikes, let me get a uh, paper towel down because this does get messy. All right, so I'll just shake this out. And I'm just gonna come along the edge. Now this is on a flat coat. And you don't want to use pigment to uh, fix her with this like we did the other stuff because uh, it'll just, it, it, won't, it doesn't work. So once you put this on, this is going to be the final thing that you do. You don't want to overcoat it with anything. So I'm just going to go along the edge. You got a little bit too much on there. I'm just going to hit the edges of the piece. And that's going to give it the hint that it's um, metallic. Gonna rub that in, maybe hit some of these dots, come along this, this raised area here. 
and I really do like <clears throat> using this stuff. And I've got some Ushi van der Rost, and I think I've used it in a couple videos. Uh, but this works just as well, in my opinion, this uh, gunmetal pigment. And then come in with a cotton swab. Clear off any dust. Maybe buff it a little bit. And just give it a little extra metallic look. Like that. And there we have, we have our, uh, I assume they're heat shields, next to the nozzles. So I think that'll look... Uh, Look pretty cool. All right, something that I want to hit on that uh, that I do a lot on my missiles and bombs is I like to add bare metal foil. And if you've never worked with it, it is rather difficult to, to use, but once you get used to it, um, it's, it's a really neat little thing that'll really make your stuff stand out. So if you're not familiar with it, bare metal foil, it comes in little packs like this. I've got matte aluminum, I've got some chrome, some black, uh, they have gold, and probably some a few other ones. But uh, I've had this for probably three years now. <laughs> so it, uh, it goes a long way if you don't, uh, if you're not paneling like a whole plane. And I've, uh, I've got a couple people that, uh, that I've been in contact with that have done entire planes in this stuff. And I think Clone Fox 80 did so as well. But uh, if you're using it like I use it, 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 it lasts a long time. So here's what it is, basically just uh, a metal foil. And, and I, I don't wanna keep this up because it kind of reflects the light, but uh, here's, a, here's one of the bombs that I did for this plane. Now this didn't come with a kit. The owner supplied this, it's a resin aftermarket bomb. It's a JDAM. So I painted these up yesterday, and here's one that I haven't added bare metal foil to, and you can really see the difference. This one really pops. So uh, this is something you want to do when you're done painting and you're absolutely done with everything, and then you add this to the very last step. So how I do this is I've cut real thin strips, and you probably won't be able to pick it up on video, but uh, I'll just cut out a little strip here. Now it does tend to fold up on itself, and I can't remember if I've ever shown this in any of my other videos, but uh, working with bare metal foil, I probably have. But I'll take it. Now, if you touch it, it takes some of the tackiness away, so you don't want to touch it uh, very much. And you can see that little end just folded up on itself. Let's get this out of the way. And all you have to do is... So I'm just gonna go around here where they've already got these like raised straps on this on this bomb. And I'm just gonna slowly put this down. Now it will come up just a little bit. So you gotta really tamp this down. So what I like to use is one of these pointed Q-tips. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna start pressing it. I'm really going to tamp this down as I go. And now once that's tamped down, I can tug on it a little bit and straighten it out and kind of push it down and can make it conform and roll it around. And now I'm going to go around and start tamping down what I just laid down real nice with my pointed Q-tip. I'm gonna butt it right up against that edge. And then I can come back with a sharp X-Acto blade and get right up to that edge and just cut it. And then I'll come back along and start hammering it down some more, especially around the edges where it kind of overlaps. Now it's it's sometimes a little bit tricky to get it um, to stick but once it sticks on there it sticks pretty well now if you come back over and spray this with a, a clear coat what's going to happen it's going to dull that metallic finish on it just like it would as if, if you painted it so like I said this is the last thing you you really want to do 
I can even come in here with a, once I get the, the edges all tamped down, I can actually try to smooth any crinkles or, or, uh, or folds that I got up and just smash it down. Now, right along this edge, it, it uh, overlapped a little bit too far. So all I have to do is take my X-Acto blade, if I can find it, and I can come in here right along that edge, and I can just follow that with my X-Acto blade. And I should be able to lift that little bit up. Well, it is stuck down pretty well. Okay, pull this up. There we go. Now I just took that little sliver up and then I can come back in with my Q-tip and smash it down again. And it actually looks pretty clean. Now I'll go around and do all the, uh, all the little straps up top here that are raised. Now in the middle of the, the bomb, they didn't have any straps. So I'm just gonna do that with a bare metal foil. And again, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cut an oversized piece. It really doesn't matter too much if you overlap a little bit. You usually wanna cut off more than you think you'll need because you can overlap it. Now it gets a little bit trickier when you use these big, these longer slices like this. And one thing you can do to get this to keep from folding up on you is you can take it and actually, before you lift it up off of the off the backing, you can actually put it on where you want it and kind of hold it there. And then kind of roll it and twist it up like this, okay? Get that out of the way so it's not reflecting in our eyes. Now, I'm just kind of lightly, but, but uh, making sure that I got it down, trying to get this to... To make sure I got it even. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I can come in here and I'm just going to take my wide Q-tip this time because I'm not having to conform around any other surfaces and I'm just going to burnish it down. And then when I get up to here, I can just take my X-Acto blade, cut it, come up just a little bit, and it's as simple as that. And that really does, in my opinion, make your, really sets off your bombs and missiles because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different texture and it's not really something that you can replicate with paint um, is as well when uh, you know if you get the chance bare metal foil they're just there's just nothing like it because it's you know actual metal so that's how I uh, embellish my bombs and missiles so I'll get this done and then I'll show you a picture of what they both look like